Welcome guys. Uh, we'll talk about UX design and programming with Ender system architecture. Now, I know that you're all actually, you know, uh, working very hard for mobile apps design, but UX design means user experience design. It plays a very vital role in mobile apps, marketing, and its popularity, and the bottom line is the business. So if you take a look, let's uh, see what we talk about when we talk about architecture. We we'll talk about overview. We we'll see Android, Telvik, Jitter, Java virtual machine. Uh, we we'll see different components, activities, interns, and services. And we we'll talk about content providers. That means these three are actually the most important component. Uh, we we'll talk about the data component and its market. Let's proceed now to talk about user experience design. Now, user experience design, suppose you have a requirement which is to design a software, you need to uh, develop a software for the smartphone, and uh, what you do actually is you analyze the requirement and try to figure out that how your smartphone, the mobile apps, is going to look like. Now, from the user perspective, please remember, that means you know that you have downloaded many different mobile apps and when you play them, you develop the intuition that how an apps going to look like so that it's very popular and users love to use it. So UX design always covers two aspects. One is how the interface should look like, how it should look like so that it is very popular, it is very you know, uh, user friendly and then it's going to stream activated. Now, remember, UX actually means user experience and um, user experience design is the first thing when you approach a mobile apps. Now, there are common, uh, you know, design features when you get quick change feature that means one type of design you change from one to another like swiping, you may have a swipe change that means the screen is partly visible here and then it's the whole thing you can see. So what you see from one activity to another activity, but it is like swiping. You may have expanded design. If you take a look here, the expanded design is from here to here. And if you take a look at the full screen design, is like this. So let's proceed to see also the navigations. And if you take a look at the navigations, you have uh, either it's a menu that you're pulling down, or you may have a slide menu. But the menu design is a very important issue for mobile user experience design. Why? Because the apps gets actually you know popularity based on the mobile apps navigation as well. So let's talk about now Android. Android actually is a Linux based platform. It has an operating system. It supports modular applications. It provides you software development tool to develop apps. And your Android apps runs in different platforms, in a smartphone, in tablet, and so on that you already know. And if you take a look at the history that Android started its journey in the year 2005, and then it had a different release, and it released with uh, very popular and very young spirits, like the first release 1.5 is called Cupcake, and then it's Dona, Vicky, Fryer, Ginger Bear, Honeycomb in different years, different versions, but why? Because, you know, one thing is here, you have the smartphones are coming with different features, different hardware, different actually different sensors, and for different sensors, you have different APIs, you are actually using them in your apps, so you have different versions, and you can see 4.2 Jollibee, and after that, we have actually KitKat, and then the last one, actually the Lollipop, which is just coming in the market. So, uh, based on this understanding, we see that the market is actually pretty big, and um, you have different versions, and you can see the market statistics, which is very interesting. And um, one thing you remember that when you develop actually Android apps, you have a distribution platform, maybe your target platform is 4.3, but you are developing using 3.2. Why? Because so that your apps runs in broad range of Android versions. But as you know that the devices are changing very frequently. All of us are changing our smartphone very fast. So we really 
enjoy more more and apps you know so kind kind of you know android version is too you can see and let's talk about android architecture which is very important now talking about the architecture it has actually one two three four and five layers and the top layer is the application layer all the applications that you have in the smartphone which is running an android platform they are in the application layer but application layer applications are actually running on the top of application framework and this application framework you basically have libraries immediately beneath this is actually cc plus plus library on the other hand you have the runtime platform and you have the kernel so let's take a look at the kernel first now this kernel actually is the linux platform and this platform has advantage two advantage one is the portability that makes it easy to compile on different hardware it is secure very secure and power management that means it, it is entirely built on process and each process consumes certain amount of power you can feel process so power management is easy and if you take a look at the next one you can make it library a library consists of the cc plus plus functions which provides you access to graphics multimedia you have database access you have font management you have web kit for micro browser in the smartphone and the libraries and image processing and so on whatever you name it you have this library is a very rich library which provides you the facility if you take a look at the application library application library provides you the application development framework it consists of activity manager package manager telephone manager location manager content provider for data notification manager so all together you have six managers and maybe some more new managers but the entire idea is that you're developing an application is an application library the next layer if you take a look is the top application layer a different application that runs in your smartphone starts from productivity personalization education and so on and the last but not the least is the Velvet virtual machine we sometimes in shots of the vm and vm actually is a virtual machine but it is it is optimized for memory constant devices see the jvm java virtual machine and dvm the difference is dvm runs on small memory for things and it's optimized so uh, you know that's a very important uh, subject for us uh, for the class test and also for the need to understand android architecture the differences between java virtual machine and dvm you can see in java virtual machine you run a java code it runs on just stack based byte code you can see there is stack based byte code but this is stack based byte code is just a byte code which runs on java virtual machine but when it comes to dvm you have a java compilation first and then you have a java byte code which gets converted into dalvik byte code and this dalvik byte code is running on dalvik virtual machine so it's actually register based byte code however it is a stack based byte code the big process which is very important now android application design it consists of actually five steps you can see what happens this is an application and uh, you first design the plan the goal how the graphical user interface is going to look like which is your ux design the second thing is event management that means i may have different buttons and menus what happens when i click on a particular button or a particular menu and this event management is ultimate user action and you may also plan to store some data the third issue and then your application data management comes in you may like to store some data in the local storage then you need application data management and some of the you know the fourth component if you see is actually your background operation management and this background operation is nothing but your process which is running and the user notification is ultimately the fifth one so application design consists of five well defined steps which is also part of our class test and also part of our midterm understanding now application components we basically have five well defined components if you see categorically it starts with the activities which is a screen intent which is you are going from one screen to another screen services the applications which is running in the background content provider the data and broadcast receiver 
is the services that is running in the background to understand as some as an internet problem so on. So I'm quickly going with the activity. Activity it's a single screen on the application and um, application can you may have multiple activities, you can see one, two, three activities. You have a button here, when you click on this button, you can see something coming, you may move from one activity to another activity and so on. Activity, you may have you have two approaches to define this activity. One approach is the programmatic approach, that means you write Java code and to define the activity, and the second approach we call declarative approach, which is the external definition of the activity. But the second approach is more uh, popular than the first approach, so declarative approach is what we use. If you can see also what happens, activity is if you build an XML layout, an XML file, you have two XML layouts automatically created uh, for two different devices. And uh, it's running from the same application port, but you can understand that whether it is a small device or a large device, and it automatically rendered that particular XML file to show you the same application. So you don't need to recompile, you see, that's actually mentioned here. And uh, if you take a look, um, in two approaches of defining activity, one we call declarative approach, and the other one is programmatic approach. In declarative approach, you try to generate XML code, in programmatic approach, you get like Java code. Now, take a look that every view has seven event in activity, it's visual screen, you have buttons and text field and so on, and you have different buttons, so when you click on certain button, you have this piece of code which is actually running. So that's actually even running. Now, activity has the activity life cycle. Activity life cycle is actually part of the activity manager. It's responsible for creating, destroying, managing activities. You, your activity, whatever stream is running, it can actually go into five different states you can see here. One is the starting, that means the activity is just about to start. The activity is running, that means you see in the screen. And activity is stopped, that means you stop it, you pause it, and then activity is destroyed, or activity is paused. So what happens in five different states? You have different lifecycle methods here. You can write code that you want to do particular work at. And activity lifecycle understanding is a very important part for class test and also for midterm. Now you have different activities uh, for different activities, different activities uh, for uh, different purposes. Um, you can see how you develop an activity. Um, this is a class I'm creating. It's my activity. Um, and creating a subclass of activity and um, this subclass of activity has these four methods that we want and we call so take a look at this now when we talk about intent intent is nothing but a message passing that means if i am activity i'm supposed i'm on activity one i click login then i go to activity two this is login intent and this is an explicit intent that means i define that if i click on this button this activity is going to come up. Now, the second type of uh, intent is actually programming. Uh, you know, it's programmable intent. It's logically you identify. Suppose there is a button here. You click on this button. You may go into either this activity or this activity. It depends on you have a variable or you have a logic to come here and you define which activity you do. So you have an implicit and explicit way of defining intents. Now, Services, they are like activities, but they run in the background, they don't have interface. Uh, they are used for non-interactive tasks, for example, networking, and service lifecycle, if you see, we have a start, starting on, on create and on start method, and the service is running in the background, and the service is destroyed when non destroyed is called. Now, content provider actually provides the data interface to your apps, and if you see your apps, it has four different methods and we provide the data in the database. Um, broadcast receiver, so do broadcast receiver. Broadcast receiver actually is a published subscribe paradigm. Your application is running and uh, something happening on the external. For example, there is a Wi Fi, there is a call coming, there is a SMS coming, and so on. All these are managed by the broadcast receivers. So, Practically, you also create your broadcast receiver by subclassing it 
and you can see the extent of crossing so that's how you create your broadcast receiver and uh, system apis are there you can actually call different system apis to do better programming what happens when we actually compile an android application we get an apk file android package file now it's actually consists of two things one is the resources that means your audio video resources uh, we have a java bytecode the xml files are my interface and the libraries so when i run install these apps these applications are actually installing the bytecode which runs in the android platform and you know you have a different way of distribution you can upload in uh, play store and your application gets downloaded you can always provide security in the apps um, it's basically an xml file you can write whether your application can access to internet and 